Welcome to Creations by In Him. I am your host, Dr. Dolores Jones. Ah, I'm excited as always because of the Word of God. We're talking about today, uh, Christ has made us free. This will be part two. And it's so wonderful to know and walk in the freedom that God has made or given to us, his children. It's nothing like being free. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Got to come out of bondage and walk in the freedom and the peace that God gives to his children. Now, I'm reading from the King James Bible, and so uh, if you have your Bible, turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter number 8, and we're going to start off with verse 31. This is Jesus. He said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, that means to take up, let the word of God have residence on the inside of you. You are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Oh, I love it. It's nothing like walking in the freedom of God. Now, if you want to be stuck like Chuck, that's your choice. I like walking in his freedom and his peace. Verse 36 in that same chapter, therefore, what's it there for? If the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, thank you, Father. Are you at peace or in prison in your mind? There are people in jail that are free within their minds than people who are walking the streets every day they are literally imprisoned within their own minds. What is your choice, peace or prison? Balls in your park. How you want to act, what you going to do? <laughs> uh, I know that it's been some time ago, some years ago, but my sister-in-law and I, we used to go down to the Twin Towers in Los Angeles, and we would share the word of God with the inmates, with the females. And it was always a wonderful opportunity. And some of those ladies that were in there, I mean, they, they knew what God's word said. And some of them were more free than like I just read to you, than those that walk the street of LA who are free in the physical, but they are imprisoned within their minds. That's something. But I like walking in the peace and the freedom that God has given us. A person can ex experience a positive or negative effect towards him or his or her choice, own choice, based on whether the choice to be at peace, which produces freedom, or to be in prison, which produces confinement. It is like the wet that goes with the water. It is a fact. God and his infinite mercy has made man to be a free moral agent and given him an opportunity of his own free will to choose or make choices based on the information and facts received. A man's, uh, along with man's determination, he then willfully, uh, willingly and willfully makes choices, good, bad, or indifferent. Remember, Jesus will not violate or override man's will. If he does not override man's will, he will not allow anyone else to make choices on behalf of another man, person, or thing. You need to know and have that understanding. Turn with me uh, now to the book of Deuteronomy. Choices, choices, choices. Yep, always remember with what choices you make, there's always going to be the consequences of that choice that one makes. So, ball is in our park. How you going to act, what you're going to do. So, over in Deuteronomy, chapter number 30, and we'll look at verse number 19. It says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose, therefore choose, therefore choose. Hallelujah, life. He says to choose life. And uh, with that understanding, 
God is a God of life, not death. Hallelujah. So you need to know and understand that. But he tells us to choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. So that choice is in your hands. So that's on you. How are you going to act? What you going to do? God made a choice not to make man a puppet on a string. However, he made man in his own image after his likeness, which is God the Father, Son Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. It is good as it gets. Hallelujah. So we've been made in the image of Almighty God. Let's look now, go with me to the book of beginnings, which is Genesis. And we're going to look at chapter number one. And the thing about this, as we have an opportunity to share, I always, I always want you to see for yourself what the word of God is saying. And that is just not something I'm making up to you. But you need to see it for your own, with your own eyes. Uh, Genesis 1, look at verse 26. It says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. And, uh-huh, make God in our image. Well, what is God? I'm glad. Or who is God? You asked. The word tells us that he is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So turn with me to the Gospel of John, the fourth chapter. Who or what is God? That's a good question. And I do have the answer. And uh, uh, John, the fourth chapter, we'll look at verse 24. It says, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All right. Okay. Question. How is man made in the image of God? Glad you asked. Paul makes a profound statement over in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. Let's turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. I'm so excited about the word of God. And that's what we have to base everything that, a ch that the child of God um, will learn according to what his word says. 1 Thessalonians 5, let's look at verse 23. It says, now may the God of peace, oh Lord, yes, your peace, himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So spirit, soul, and body. What happens when an individual receives and confesses Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior, it's your spirit, the real you on the inside that's born anew or born from above. Now, your soul contains your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions. And the physical body is what I see of you and what you see of me. So we are made in the image and the likeness of Almighty God, spirit, soul, and body. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful to know? Um, according to what God's word says, Christians need to understand that the word of God is spiritual and that we'll never understand it with the natural understanding. So turn with me now to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So it's so important that we have the word of God so that you can see it for yourself. And that he tells us or reminds us to be the doer of his word and not just the hearer only. 
Romans 2, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we will look at verse number 10. Glory to God. It says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no man knows the things of God except by the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely, freely, freely given to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the natural man does not receive the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So that's what we're talking about. To uh, the natural man, mm -mm, that doesn't make any sense. No, it's not sense. It's faith based on what God's word says. So now what we need to do is to get our minds renewed to the word of God. There again, because it's already said the natural mind or natural mind does not receive, natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God. He thinks they're foolishness. But that's why for the child of God, we have to get into the word of God and get these minds renewed based on what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Turn with me now. We're going to look at Romans chapter number 12. Glory to God. Romans 12. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12. Look at um, verse number 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not, verse 2, be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we got to get these minds renewed and acclimated to what God's word says. In other words, you got to get rid of stinking thinking. <laughs> yes, it makes all the difference. Glory to God. All the difference. Now, over in uh, the book of Hosea, the word tells us in chapter number four, Hosea, chapter four, glory to God. It says, man is destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So that's what makes the difference. If you do not have the word of God, you are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because we can't figure it out in our own self's mind. You have to have the word of God and get the mind renewed based on what God's word says. Makes all the difference. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So we don't want to be lacking the knowledge of God. That's why he tells us to study, to show yourself approved unto God over in uh, 2 Timothy 2 and 15. It says, study to show yourself approved to God. A workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And his word is truth. It contains the truth. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about. God is not a liar. He is a man of truth. His word is truth. And that's what we have to go by. Amen. Makes all the difference. Hey, thank you, Father. Yes, yes, yes. Now, information. Man without information can and will be destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Information is knowledge, and knowledge is power. You can feel, <laughs> yeah, you can feel me on this. Man needs to learn how to think God, how God thinks. 
How does God think about man? I'm glad you asked because I got an answer for you. Turn with me to Jeremiah. How does God think about man? He has good thoughts for us because he loves us. He's concerned for us and about us, every area and every aspect of our lives. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to succeed in our everyday life. And the good news is we can. However, we have to learn how to do things his way and not our way. Jeremiah 29, and look at verse number 11. And well, we'll read 11 through 13. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and, a, and hope. Then you will call upon me, and I will and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. That's so precious. That's right. So the father thinks nothing but good thoughts towards us, his children, and he only has the best for us as we decide to do things his way. I believe that everyone has a belief system and believes in something. Also that everyone has to has the free will of choice. A person's choice can be experienced by two ways. Let me explain. One way or one can make a choice by saying something verbally or by not saying something. Either way, a choice will be made. Something or think about it. Isn't that something? Think about it. Case in point, I say I purchased a piece of property in good faith with the intentions to pay on time. Now I have made a decision not to pay the, the uh, mortgage payment because of other commitments, and this goes on for the next 90 days. The foreclosure process is now set in order to take action. The mortgage company does not care that I am having financial problems due to the economy. They just want their money for the loan I took out. Guess what? The choice I made in the beginning has now affected my good intentions. My choice is now working negatively against me. Why? because there is a cause and an effect to every choice we make. That's it. So that's why it can be good, bad, or indifferent, but always remember to every choice we make, there is a consequence of that choice that we chose. There again, balls in our park. Amen. Hallelujah. God made a choice on the behalf of mankind. He decided to do or turn to the will of God, not his will, on the behalf of mankind. And he became willing to pay that or become that sacrificial lamb to pray that, pay that ultimate price on the, on the behalf of mankind. What does love have to do with it? Everything. That's the kind of God that we serve. He loves us so much. Oh, let's turn to Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter number 26. I love it. It's the truth of the word of God that makes man free. I love it. Over in Matthew 26, look at verse number 38. Then it says, talking about Jesus. Then, then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here. And watch with me. Then over in verse number 39, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And look at verse number 42 in that same chapter. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed saying, O oh my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me 
Nevertheless, I drink it. Your will be done. He became willing to do this on the behalf of mankind. He became, he, he paid that ultimate price. In, no, in other words, man have, should have gone to hell, but Jesus took it upon himself so that we could be free in the Lord Jesus Christ through what his word says. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you for paying that ultimate price. Yes, when he hung on that cross. Yes, when they pierced his side. They said that the blood and the water came gushing out, and he did it on our behalf. Oh, what does love have to do with it? Everything. That's the true love of God. Over in the book of uh, Isaiah, uh, the, 30, the 52nd chapter, it talks about that his physical body, when he hung on that cross, and, and it was just marred beyond human recognition. Oh, my goodness. But he, he did it. He did it on the behalf of us so that we would have an opportunity to come in right relationship with him and to learn to love him and serve him and walk up right before him. Oh, he's such an awesome God. Awesome God he is. Let's look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, oh, thank you, Jesus, chapter 8 and verse number 12, it says, if there is first a willing mind, it is acceptable according to what a man has, what one has, not according to what he does not have. So if they have a willing mind to want to set forth and be the doer of what God's word says, not just the hearer only, and walk in the freedom that God has already blessed us and given to us, all we have to do is receive it and walk in it, in its exciting way of life. We have to learn how to cast down the imaginations and lies that the enemy tries to bring to our mind, negative thoughts, ideas, and suggestions uh, from the pit of hell, we're not obligated to accept it. He wants us to, to, to receive his lies, but the devil is a lie. Mm -mm. We're not going to do it. Over in 2 Corinthians in chapter 10, verse number 3, it says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So we have to let the enemy know that when he's trying to bring these lies, negative thoughts, ideas, and suggestions, no, I'm not receiving it. I do not accept it in the name of Jesus. All right, I want to take this time and extend this um, mm, woo, call of God ah, to individuals who have not yet had the opportunity to receive Jesus. Just pray along with me. Dear God, your word says over in um, Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I would be saved. For with my heart I believe unto righteousness, and with my mouth confession is made unto salvation. Lord Jesus, you are my Lord. I receive you now as Lord and Savior. I thank you for taking spiritual torment for my sin. I thank you for taking mental distress for my worries and my anxieties. Ah, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor, Father. Hi, brother. Hi, sister. Welcome to the family of God. Glory to God. Now, OCN needs to hear from you. Take some time and drop them a line. Let them know that you have received Jesus this day. Glory to God. If you are in need of prayer, there's a phone number that you can call and someone will pray with you. We want to thank you for viewing and taking time in viewing with us today concerning the word of God. So I welcome you. I thank you. Uh, we'll see you for the next time. Know that I love you. Dr. Jones signing off for today.
Bye.